Hi folks, welcome to Bear Mountain. This video is going to be a little different than the ones we've done in the past. This one is about our experiment this summer with electroculture, specifically using underground magnetic antennas as developed by Yannick van Dorne, uh, who is an agronomist from Belgium. He has many interesting experiments that he's done with electroculture and magnetic, he calls it magnetoculture over the years and its effect on plants. This is just our version of a test that we did with some green fillet beans that we grew this summer. So let's take a look at how we put it together. So setting up the underground antenna is really quite easy. We use some um, what you would say would be 12 gauge galvanized fence wire and six magnets that were coated in beeswax. Now these little magnets are, uh, they had had a hole in the center so when they were stacked on each other um, they basically would attach to each other strongly with the magnetic field and this, then it was coated with a natural organic beeswax. Now one of the things that's important to note is that this is going to be a buried antenna so they are going to be the wire is stretched and runs in what would be true called uh, magnetic north so the line of the wire has to be aligned with the magnetic field heading in a north-south direction and you can see from this picture that as it's lined out it's going to be buried approximately uh, 10 inches deep and the magnet uh, coated in the beeswax is attached the wires that run through it and it is is attached at the southern end of the pole of the actual wire itself so it's real important too that when we look at the magnets that we're using that we align the magnet so uh, the north pole of the magnet is facing north so it it's going to be attached at the southern end of the wire you know but it is going to be the magnets are going to be aligned so that the north pole of the magnet is facing north down the wire I don't know if that makes sense but the whole idea is is that the mag magnet is working with a wire that is has iron in it so it too will become somewhat very weakly magnetized. Okay this is the section with the electroculture and we use the magnetic antenna with the galvanized wire. You can see where the stake is there and then it comes back over to roughly way over here. So the wire runs diagonally through the bed and what we're seeing is is that these plants in general are further ahead and in many cases closer to the wire the leaves are actually bigger all right this section right here uh, again both bean sections were planted on August 8th and today is the 19th and you can see that the this is the area with no electroculture uh, but has had the same Jadam solutions. Some of the leaves, our uh, first true leaves are out and are a fairly good size. Others are just uh, still in the process of getting their first true leaves out. So this is kind of where this stands at this point. Generally healthy. Uh, we've treated it with Jadam microorganism solution before we planted, the same as we did with the other. Plus we used uh, Jadam liquid fertilizer at the time um, uh, before planting as well. Today is August 27th. It's been 17 days since we transplanted these guys. And this is the group of beans called Maxwell that were planted in uh, the electroculture bed. And what we can see is the growth is pretty vigorous. We do have some insect damage, but basically the plants are definitely outgrowing it. Many of the plants are approaching 22 inches, 20 inches. I'd say the average that we have in here 
is probably somewhere around 16 to 18 inches and they're looking um, quite healthy the color is a nice green so the plants were fertilized only with Jadam microorganism solution and Jadam liquid fertilizer on this side and we've done this uh, on a 10 day rotation and so it's basically had one fertilizer application after transplant the bed preparation was after the potato rotation we did not apply any more compost but what we did do is we applied Jadam microorganism solution and uh, the Jadam liquid fertilizer on a five day rotation we did it three times before planting and uh, we, we wanted to get a fourth one in but we didn't quite make it um, this was also done for the non uh, electroculture bed let's go take a look at that one all right this is the non electroculture bed and what we're looking at here is this was planted about 15 feet away from the one we just photographed and the leaves are definitely smaller and the plants on average are about uh, somewhere between 10 and 12 inches tall they're healthy in general uh, not much more insect damage than the electroculture one so that's staying at about the same and uh, from a standpoint of being uh, just a little over two weeks in the ground, they're actually looking pretty good. But the only thing is, is they seem to be about uh, somewhere between five and, and eight inches shorter than the ones grown on the electric culture bed. So the non-electric culture bed was also treated exactly the same way. This is the same variety. It's Maxibel green beans. It's a French fillet style bean. And they were planted, at, started at exactly the same time. So uh, we transplanted using the same techniques. And we also did a pre-treat on this bed with the JMS and the JLF three times as we did with the electric culture bed. Nothing between the two beds has culturally been different. So looking at the electric culture bed one more time, the other thing to note is even though we do have some insect damage on the leaves, the leaves in general are probably 10% or better in size compared to the non-electric culture bed. All right, today is September 16th, and these beans uh, were seeded on July 31st. And what you're looking at is this is the row that was planted in the ground using uh, electric culture, the magnetic antenna, antennas, underground antennas. And this bean variety is Max Bell, as we talked about before. And where we are now is we're getting close to our first harvest. You can see that there's lots of blossoms. And we do still have bugs, although the damage isn't that great. But the actual leaf size for mature leaves is actually quite big. And there's more leaf nodes and there's more beans than we have traditionally seen and at this point it looks like our harvest is going to be pretty good we're going to start it this week and we'll probably harvest until near frost which will be near the end of october now let's go take a look at the side that was not treated with electric culture same varieties same fertilizer fertilizer regime same watering regime everything and see what those guys look like Okay, this is the same variety. It's uh, Maxibel, and this was non-electroculture, although it had the same JMS and Jadam liquid fertilizer treatments as the one under the electroculture. And in general, the leaf sizes are, are smaller. We have more insect damage, kind of a, I don't know if you want to call it a type of a leaf miner or a thrip or of some type or another has caused spotting on the leaves uh, particularly the older leaves there are these guys are beginning to bloom and there there are beans forming uh, the variety uh, again is the same but the size of the plants in general are about uh, probably 15 to 25 percent smaller than uh, the other side i mean when you look at these guys in here you can see if you look close enough i'm kind of zooming in too far but what you can see is you can see ground, uh, whereas the other beans had more leaf surface and they were bigger in general. 
and you couldn't actually see the ground beneath the plants. And these were all planted on the same density, so there was no difference in that. So our next step over the next couple of weeks is to measure how much are we harvesting from the electroculture beans versus the non-electroculture beans. We planted the same amount of plants. We treated them the same. Again, I'm kind of repeating myself over and over on this, but this is important to know that the control group that we just looked at, uh, the non-electroculture group, was treated exactly the same as the electroculture group. So we'll check back in and we do our weigh-ins and see how the harvest goes. You'll also note that there is some of that same uh, like thrip damage to some of the older leaves, but the plants in general have fought off that damage much more effectively than the plants on the non-electroculture. And most of the leaves don't demonstrate any significant damage. There's a few spots where there's cucumber beetle damage, but again, even that's not that great compared to the non-electroculture varieties. So the last thing to note is that these two plots are 10 feet apart. Okay, they're in the same tunnel, the same soil type. And again, this is anecdotal, but it appears to be that the magnetic antenna buried in the ground is actually having some effect. But I can't prove it 100% unless I was to do a total soil assay and understand that there is no actual mineral difference or biologic difference between the two plots. And I can't really prove that at all. So again, it's anecdotal. So we'll see what happens with the next crop rotation that happens in here too. We'll just keep plugging along. This is kind of really interesting. So stay tuned folks. So we're gonna be doing our first picking here. Today is the 21st of September and these beans are Maxibel variety. This is the bed you're looking planted with the electroculture. You can st still see that there's quite a few blooms coming on, but there's also quite a few beans that are just, you know, almost perfect size to pick. And what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, pick the electroculture in one side and one in one container, and then we're gonna pick the non-electroculture, which is about 10 feet down the road and put that in a second and just see how our first picking goes. But I can already see that in general, if our climate holds and our temperatures hold, that we're gonna get many more beans out of the electroculture side. The plants are bigger and there's definitely a lot more blossoms. So we'll pick and then see where we're at. We're beginning to pick in this section now. This is the section that did not have the electroculture. And what you can kind of see is the plants in general are significantly smaller. Uh, we are, do have beans, but we've also got uh, quite a bit of leaf damage. Um, this, this row, of it's the same variety, Maxibel, same number of plants. It was given the same fertilizer treatments and same watering regimen. And so there really isn't any difference. It's in the same tunnel. And so what we're looking at is, is it's significantly smaller plants. Roughly, um, I'm guessing that those electroculture plants, now that I think about it, are, are at minimum 25% bigger. Um, then this uh, non-electroculture side shows that we've had significant insect damage, uh, particularly uh, all the way up to the newer leaves. You can kind of see some of the ones in the back. They were ne really major league negatively affected. Um, you look at the damage here and, and that's huge. Again, this section of beans is if there were insects that were interested in the other plants, this was not very far away from the electroculture version. So let's see what our, our harvest is going to be out of this. Well, this is the final result from the first picking. Now, the beans on the bowl, the green bowl on my right, which I guess would be your left probably, maybe when you're looking at it on the video, they were out of the electroculture with the magnetic antenna. And you can see it's quite a bit larger volume. The second bowl, the silver bowl, was uh, from the non-electroculture and, and they were significantly less. The beans were smaller. I actually had more beans with insect damage itself. Now, to be fair, 
The non-electric culture ones were a little bit farther behind in terms of timing. And so there is a fair number of ones coming up on the second picking that look like they'll, um, they'll mature and there'll be a larger second picking. But also too, when we go back and look at the electric culture versions, you can see that there's a lot of blossoms here uh, still to come out. And the leaf growth is still pretty vigorous on the plants. Whereas the non-electric culture plants, as I showed earlier, uh, were really kind of reached their terminal size. They were not going to get terribly much bigger. So I think the yield on this is going to be substantially larger. So we'll keep tuned and we'll see what happens on the second harvest. Okay, so this is just an experiment and it's all anecdotal. Now one of the things that that had is both beds had a potato rotation before it. Uh, both beds were fertilized with the potatoes the same way. And we didn't notice any real big difference in terms of uh, the potato top growth or the potato yield uh, between the two beds. So I'm not certain that there was a basic infertility or fertility issue at the time for the potatoes. However, beans have slightly different nutrient requirements. So one of the things I can't say for certain is that there was no soil test or bioassay to try to determine the microbiology of the two various spots in the tunnel, whether there was a difference there. Um, so, you know, there could be confounding factors in here that are just, it just happens to be that this is working out looking great uh, for the beans under the electric culture versus the non. Or are simply the beans, you know, because of the position in the tunnel, maybe a little slower uh, for the non-electric culture, but ultimately in the end will catch up. We'll keep looking at this on a weekly basis to see where we're at. But what it appears to look like is the electric culture one is ahead of the non-electric culture one in size and probably will begin yielding or blooming uh, sooner. So it's actually in the same period of time grown much more faster on the electric culture than the non-electric culture. I got to plead ignorance here. Um, this is all an experiment. I saw this stuff on the internet. I was perplexed by it and I figured, what the heck? You know, I'm only going to spend a couple of bucks trying to figure it out. Um, if you guys want to find out more about it, the information I got was from this guy in Belgium. He's French, uh, Belgian. His name is Yannick Van Dorn Dorney. And you can, he's got a YouTube channel and you can kind of go look at it, see what the things he's done. Now, a lot of people will look at this and go, man, that's all voodoo. Honestly, I just looked at it as kind of a fun thing to experiment with, to see if I actually see a difference. And at least with this bean rotation, anecdotally, it looks like there's a difference. However, will that also translate to, say, when the beans are finished, and then I try, uh, I'll try the same experiment with like some fall crops, like with kale or something of that, and see if there's any difference with that. Um, so I'm going to kind of keep it going for a while just to kind of see. I'm just going to take the two spots in the tunnel and continually do the same thing. And I may uh, work out trying to get a soil test for next spring just to see where the, where the two beds are, relatively speaking, if there's a fertility difference. I mean, this could, maybe this is just explained by the fact that there's a fertility difference between the two spots in the tunnel. I don't know. Anyway, it's all anecdotal. You know, this don't take this as like, oh my gosh, this is pure scientific fact. I just think that there is something interesting going on here. So I thought maybe I'd share this with you and you guys can think about it yourselves. Anyway, take care. We'll catch you on the next video. Sorry for I'm being a little shaky here because I don't have my all my gear with me. I'm just kind of making this uh, video as, as we're going here. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.